Hello, hello, and welcome to the third episode of the second season of Kuba HQ Tutorials. I'm Kuba Michalski, and I'm here today to share with you Superglue. Superglue is a set of very simple expressions I created that, as the name suggests, are made for sticking things to one another. And I built them for all those situations when the standard After Effects parenting just doesn't cut it. Just like parenting though, the expressions are very simple to use, so I can guarantee that in pretty much no time, all of you are going to be gluing one thing to another, sticking them together like a man discovering the beauty of duct tape for the first time in their life. So very often working on your compositions, you may need to stick something on top of the footage and move it around tracking a certain feature in 2D, making sure that your tracker does not scale, does not rotate and stays perfectly fine while being attached to the feature of the footage. Sometimes it may be very easy. You may just uh, use the built-in 2D tracker in After Effects. Sometimes it may be a bit more challenging. So I created a couple of case scenarios that I'm gonna walk you through to show you how this may or may not work. So this is our example tracker, and we're going to try to attach it to a number of different animations, increasingly getting more and more intricate, and show you why a need for an expression like super glue. Let's jump to the first example. This is the most basic animation. It's just a move. Uh, our object is moving on a rectangular path. So if I activate the tracker in here and just make sure that our anchor point is right in the center where we want it to, I can simply drag it to the desired point and parent it to our object. And if I play it back, it's tracking just fine. So this wasn't really difficult at all. Let's try something a little bit more complicated. So in the second case, we have the object, but this time it is rotating. So let's go to the first frame, activate our tracker. Again, drag it into right position and parent it to the arm. Whoa, there we go. And if I play it back, we can see that while the parenting is working, unfortunately, uh, our tracker inherits the rotation of the object, which makes it quite difficult to read. So what we can do in here is simply go to the rotation node, turn on the expressions and write a very simple one. So I'm going to just type parent dot rotation. And that means look at what you're parented to and read the value of rotation from it. And all I need to do is add a minus in front of it so that we're going to negate the rotation of the original. And if I play it back, it seems to work just fine. So we managed to manually solve it quite easily. If you just want to see how the expression works, you can see that as our arm goes into negative 48.8 degrees, our tracker goes into positive, thus being at zero rotation. Pretty simple. All right, on to the next one then. So in here, we have a very simple forward kinematics rig. So we have the blue arm to which we parented the green arm and the green arm inherits all the rotation of the blue arm and on top adds its own. So let's try it again. Let's grab our tracker, drag it into the desired position, parent it to arm two, and then enable rotation and type a slightly more complicated expression. So this time I'm gonna write minus parent dot rotation. So that's the same as we did. So this will read its direct parent, which is the green arm. But from that, I'm also going to subtract the blue rotation. So that would be minus parent dot parent rotation. So that's basically the parent of the parent. And easy enough, you can see this works as well. So if I were to disable this expression right now, our tracker freaks out and just flies all around. But with this expression, we're actively counteracting two layers or, or two levels of inherited rotation. Next, next. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be fun. So we have one, two, three, four levels of kinematics. Well, we can do it. Stick it to where it belongs, 
power entity to the top level rotation and let's start typing so activate expressions minus parent rotation minus parent parent rotation minus parent 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 rotation i feel like i'm listening to monty python's spam song parent 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 rotation victory we have succeeded right but i mean you can already see how this is starting to become a little bit ridiculous and writing such long expressions that only serve one simple scenario is also not very useful because what if at this point i decide you know what i actually don't want this red arm in here and i want my tracker to follow the orange one so let's just grab the tracker move it here and reparent it into arm three and boom right expression error because arm three has only two levels of parents not three so i need to go into the expression remove the last parent and then it's fixed and then i look at it and i say you know what now it looked better with the orange one and i have to type all this stuff again not very uh useful not not very user friendly approach so this is where i can start using super glue and it's gonna help us a lot so let me remove this expression from the rotation enable our last arm in here and I already have it installed, but it's a standard procedure, right? Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or Vimeo, check the description below the video. There's gonna be a link to my site. Once you're on my site, check out the article. Towards the end, there is a link to a zip file. Download the zip file, extract it into your presets directory, and voila, you're gonna have it in your animation presets. So all you need to do is in the search box here, write super glue. And that's gonna show you two options. Super glue to the anchor off and super glue to the center off. Basically that will let you hook it up to any layer. Now, there is one trick to this particular rig, which is if I look at my arm four, and I must have disabled display of the helper document. If I look at it and maybe I can change it to white so it's a bit more visible, how about yellow? Yeah, uh, you, you will notice that the anchor point is actually here, right? And I want to parent it to this circle. That's because uh, I'm using the anchor point to already rotate the arm around its parent. So what I need to do in this particular case is create a new null object drag it to our desired position and i can rename it uh, track me and you can really give it uh, any name you want and i'm gonna parent this to arm four so you'll see that okay ignore what's happening with the tracker let's just <laughs> unhook it there uh you can see that the null is following our arm but it's inheriting all its rotations etc so Select the tracker and just double click QHQ super glue to the anchor off. And you'll see that two things pop up in here in our effects panel. Super glue to the anchor off where you can choose the layer and offset, which will allow you to tweak it a little bit. So all you need to do is select what do you want to track. I wanna track this track me layer, boom. It's stuck, right? So, I mean, you still have the offset, so you can move it left and right, up and down. We don't need to. And here it is, it's, it's stuck perfectly. So what happens if I want to move it somewhere else? Let's say I want to move it here. I don't need to create another null because actually my arm four already has an anchor point there. So I just go to the drop down list, hook it up to arm four, our tracker jumps into place and continues working. And it's really that easy. Boom, arm three, arm two, or back to the track me. Pretty fun, right? Let's see some other scenarios where this could come in handy. So yeah, what we have in here, it may look like a 3D composition, but it is not. This is simply 
an arm that's at the same time rotating and scaling. So we would encounter a similar problem if we just parented our tracker is that it would inherit all these transformations, right? So we stick our tracker in here and as we play it back, whoa, you know, it's like it stretches and, and becomes all crazy. And at this point, if we try to do it manually, we will have to write one expression that counteracts the rotation and then another one, which would be much more complicated, that counteracts the stretching. So it calculates how much our original arm is scaling in both X and Y and then scales our tracker back. So that doesn't sound like much fun. So we can do the same thing. And again, you know, our anchor point is in here at the bottom. So uh, let me just quickly create a new null, drag it there. Uh, parent it to the arm and get our tracker apply super glue to it and stick it to the null and you can see that right now while the uh, original is doing all these weird distortions our tracker follows it perfectly and doesn't really care about scaling or rotation awesome so let's look at a few more examples uh, 3D rotate, right? So in here, the things are becoming really complicated and I love to use expressions and I love to play with math, but uh, trying to solve all the rotations and deformations in here would probably be a bit much for me. So if you want to attach it somewhere, it's super easy. One more null, let's just stick it to arm two and I'm going to reset its position. Whoops, I have to turn it into a 3D layer and just make sure that on that 3D layer it's attached where it's supposed to be. So let's just move it to the right position. Okay, this is our anchor and again tracker on. And did you just notice what we did? We, we switched from working with uh, 2D layers into 3D layers, but our methodology stays the same. Super glue to the anchor off, attach to the null, and now we're tracking in 3D. So this is really cool because sometimes you may end up working on a composition where you switch the layers between being 2D and 3D as you're trying to decide something and you have a single expression that works for all the situations so it could be you know me switching this uh, arm to being 2d or me deciding hey you know i, I just created uh whoops there we go i just created <laughs> sorry all the windows are opening on another monitor so i created this uh square that is actually a 2D thing and you know I give it a typical wiggle one comma let's say 500 expression so it just flies around randomly and I may decide hey you know I, I want to track that instead no problem you go to your tracker and say hey you know I no longer want to track this 3D null instead I want to track a 2D solid boom absolutely no problem and now it's attached to this so you can see how easy it is to attach new layers to, to pretty much anything you want to and by now you probably have noticed that actually we have two expressions in here we have super glue to the anchor off and super glue to the center off and actually there's four expressions in the super glue but the other two i'm gonna show you in just a moment you know it doesn't really make much difference in case of this square right now because uh, its anchor point is in its center but uh, let me just really quickly uh, undo a couple of steps now i'm gonna create a new composition for that it's gonna be much quicker so let's do a new comp this is gonna be what Example 09, I should have thought it before, scaling. And I'm gonna create a new null in here. That's, uh, let's say 500 by 500. It can be read and I'll move the anchor point to 00. 
it's pretty hard to see because both the color of the layer and its markers are oh god red and green really bad combination yellow okay so our anchor point is in the corner right now and if i create what am i doing i can just bring the tracker in and just change the anchor of this one to match and maybe scale it down a bit I can use the same expression as I did before, super glue to the anchor off and select red solid. And what do you know? It sticks right where it's supposed to go. But I can also instead use super glue to the center off. And now when I select uh, my red solid, it's gonna calculate where the center goes. And this is pretty powerful actually, because uh, you can do a whole manner of things to this red solid and our tracker is gonna stick to the center. So let's say I'm gonna apply wiggle one, uh, what, 90 to the scale, and then maybe another wiggle to position. Actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's turn it into 3D layer. So I'm gonna now wiggle, what, one 500 on the position. And did my scale break meanwhile, or is it still working? It is still working, right? Awesome. And let's also add one for rotation. So, or orientation. Wiggle one, let's do 90. So now it's, it's a complete freak out right now. The square is going all over the place. And keep in mind the anchor of the square is still in the corner, right? But our tracker is able to figure out where the center of the layer is and stick to it like nobody's business. So I'm gonna show you a few more case scenarios of you know how you may want to use it. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you how the whole thing works. And you know, my, my last two tutorials, I just blazed through the presets and uh, didn't really go in depth on how I build them. And I received some feedback where people were asking, you know, could you walk through the expressions step by step? And in case of chromatic aberration, that would probably take around two hours. So I wanted to keep the tutorial fairly simple but since uh, super glow is not really that complex uh, i can show you how it works and there's one trick in there that uh, is really kind of cool and, and good to know if you're into writing expressions yourself so i'm just gonna remove this tracker in here and add another one on top uh readjust my anchor point again and why I'm doing that is I'm going to switch back to the uh, anchor off, which is a simpler of the two expressions and it's easier to follow up. So, okay, what we have is uh, three components to this expression. Let's just scale it around. So we have two controllers. We have super glue to the anchor off, which is a layer controller. And this will basically create a list of all your layers in the composition and allow you to select them. And then we have offset, which uh, keep in mind the offset is relative to the screen. So uh, if I tell it to move to the right, it's going to move right on the screen and not on the axis of its parent, right? So it's like that. And then of course there is the expression itself. So if I just untwirl position in here and open it up, you can see it's just a few lines of code and actually it could be even a single line if I decided to write it in a bit more dirty way, but I wanted to keep it fairly legible. So what it does is it uses this very, very simple expression, target dot two underscore comp target anchor point, right? And Target is basically the layer that we selected with our layer selector, and it simply transforms the position of the anchor point in the composition space into the screen space. That's all it does. It, on top of it, adds the offset, which I just demonstrated, and of course, defines target by reading the value from the layer. Now, what's really cool in here and I must admit I've been doing expressions for many years without even knowing this, is this little thing, try catch loop. And what this does is it allows your expressions to have errors on them, right? What I mean is this, uh, let's just 
run the logic. Right now we have, mm, let me just open it up. Right now we have super glue to the anchor of red solid two, right? So target is red solid two. The next line says, hey, you know, do the transformation and figure out where the anchor of red solid two is on the screen's place and then put the tracker there. But what would happen if I said none? What happens then is it says target is nothing, figure out where is the anchor point of nothing. And what do you think would happen typically? Actually, I can demonstrate it. Let me just copy the expression, erase the try loop, boom, an error would happen. Because how are we gonna get an anchor point of something that doesn't exist or isn't defined? Now try and catch allows you to have those errors. So what it does is basically tries to perform this action to figure out where is the anchor point of the layer. But if an error occurs, it's gonna do an action in a second bracket, which is simply go to the value. So if I just type zero, zero in here, it's gonna move my tracker here because there is no layer, it fails to perform the operation Therefore, it defaults into simply following the value. So you have manual control in here if you disable targeting. As soon as I find a valid target, the expression kicks in and this no longer does anything. I can try and change those values. It no longer reacts. So it's kind of like an if then statement, but uh, it's a bug catcher allows you to commit mistakes. And this is really cool because without it, this expression wouldn't be possible. And honestly speaking, I, I was trying to code something like that for quite a while. And just because I didn't know the try catch loop, I always failed. So I was planning to shoot some footage for uh, this demonstration, but uh, unfortunately all the cameras at the studio were taken by different projects and I had a choice. Either I'm going to postpone the recording of the tutorial by another week or just find another way. And uh, what I did is I just screen captured uh, a model of a character from the video game I'm playing. And for those of you who uh, do play video games, that's uh, a demon hunter from Diablo 3. And don't make fun of me, I have better characters. This is just uh, one that I'm leveling currently. So it's a fairly low level, but it will work for uh, this demonstration. And let's say I'm creating an animation in which I want to share with someone some of the gear this character is wearing. So I may want to point out this uh, skull-like shoulder or, or the pouch that he has in here, or maybe the design on the back of his cape. So what I can do is, is I'm just gonna grab my video and track the camera on it, right? So I'm gonna use the standard After Effects track camera option which will calculate uh, the solve for the camera and the movement of the object. It's going fairly fast, there we go. Uh, let's try to figure out the ground plane in here. It's not really necessary, but uh, I like to do that anyway. So uh, Chris said ground plane and origin. And then let's find a couple of points that we would like to follow. So uh, what I was talking about, the pouch in here. So this blue cross I think it's fairly well positioned on the pouch. Yeah, let's try that. So uh, right click, create null and camera, and I'm gonna call it pouch, not pooch, pouch. Let's see what else can we point to? Let's say this one on the cape in here. So create null because the camera is already there. Cape. Detail, uh, maybe one more somewhere. Ah, we were talking about the shoulders, right? So camera tracker. Uh, this seems to be smack in the center of the shoulders. Create now. Shoulder and maybe something on the boots just to have something on top and on the bottom as well. Da, 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 da. This one will do. Okay, create now. And I'm just gonna call it boots. And maybe I'll change the color. Actually, it doesn't really matter. So at this point, I have uh, 
a set of nulls that are fairly well following my character. And you can see that some of them are sticking really well, like uh, the one right here on the cape, while others are not very precise. So this shoulder one, I'll probably need to move it in a little bit. And let's see, uh, let's readjust it just so. Yeah, this is much better. Okay, the pouch also, I think I can move it a tiny bit here and maybe in so that it does stick inside. Awesome. And the boots, the boot is hovering around. Let's move it there and there. Okay, so now let's create the, the tracker itself that we're gonna follow. And actually, let's be efficient about it. So I'll just make a single copy of the tracker and call it uh, Diablo Tracker. Go inside and just continue reusing the same one rather than creating four different ones. So here is our font. Uh, I wonder how are we aligned? Yeah, we should be aligned to the center. So it's much easier to type. And let's go to frame zero, open up the text and keyframe it and start with boots, then move to one second, retype it. Uh, I'm trying to remember what did we have? Shoulder, uh, let's go to pouch. And I know there was one more, ah, the cape detail, right? So let's say cape. Oh, it even fits the whole word. Awesome. We have a simple animation in here that goes through all those words. And then if I drag the Diablo tracker in here, scale it down to, let's say, 50%, you know, it's going to jump from one to another as we scale it. But I can then simply go to time and say freeze frame. And if I freeze frame on the time marker zero, it's going to remain just saying boots. And I feel like it's still a bit too big. Let's turn it down a notch uh, and maybe change the scaling here so we can see the whole composition. Okay, so Diablo tracker. This is the boots one. We want to follow the anchor off. So super glue to the anchor off. What? Boots. Boom. Uh, why is it there? Ah, it's there because I did not adjust the anchor of my uh, tracker itself. So let's just do that very quickly. So anchor is supposed to be in the center of the circle. And then if I hook it up to boots, boom, it's nicely attached. So let's quickly make a copy of it. Uh, switch the time to one second, then it changes to the shoulder and simply attach it to the shoulder. Another copy. And I'm hitting U to uh, display all the keyframed values. Two seconds, pouch. Let's hook it up to pouch. And one more, duplicate U, three seconds. And that's what cape detail, let's hook it up to cape detail. They look fairly boring right now, almost lined up vertically. But as soon as I play it back, you will see that they are nicely following the character. And, you know, if you try to track it using your standard 2D tracker, it would not work because as the character goes around, some of the details would disappear behind and there would be no point to track. But uh, using this technique, it's, it's really super easy. So yeah, how about one more example? And then I'm gonna show you one extra little neat trick that comes with super glue. But first example number eight. So there it is. This is number eight. And this one is a bit ridiculous, right? But uh, it, I just made it to demonstrate a point. So far, what we've been doing is we've been modifying the position of our layer. But with a bit of tweaking, you can actually get this expression to do much more and actually control your effects. So I just want to show you how to do that. So 
this is a, a super simple composition in which uh, I have some floor, I have the text, I have a floating light and optical flares attached to it. The light itself has a wiggle expression on it, so it just kind of randomly flies into different positions, illuminating the scene. Let's say I want to create a weird distortion that absolutely makes no sense, but uh, just demonstrates the point on the lens flare itself. I'm gonna use the twirl for it. So what I could do is go to optical flares and go to my effects panel, apply twirl by double clicking, and I would need to move the center of the twirl into where the lens flare is, and then increase the value and maybe lower the, uh, the radius. And you know, it creates a weird effect. I, I have no idea what would be a practical use for it, but uh, unfortunately, as soon as it animates, the flare actually exits the twirl zone, uh, which has a center somewhere here, and it starts looking kind of weird because, uh, <laughs> like, like the original didn't look weird, but uh, you know, it slides off this uh, S curve. So what we can do is something like this. I'm gonna create a new solid in here, a small one, so that it doesn't mess our eyes up too much. If you've seen a jump, that's because of the uh, wiggle expression taking under consideration whatever layers are above. Uh, I'm gonna apply super glue to it, right? So super glue to the anchor, boom. What you will see though is unfortunately Super glue cannot track lights because lights don't really have the same properties as the layers. So uh, same trick as in the early examples, I'm gonna create a new null and this is tracking null, turn the null into 3D, parent the null to the light itself and then zero the position on it so that Right now, if I scrub through, you can see that the null is attached to the light. If I right now go to my rectangle, I can select tracking now, and you'll see that the rectangle now follows my flare. But that doesn't do as much good because what we want to do is we want our twirl effect to follow. So if you look carefully, you have the twirl center, which is a classic two value positional uh, keyframe. So we can simply copy paste our expression from one place to another. I mean, I could parent it right now to that red solid and turn off the red solid and that would work. But uh, if I want all the controls on this layer, I can do that as well. So let's just open the red solid, grab these two guys, copy them and paste them onto our flares layer. Then go back to the red solid, open position, grab the expression that we have inside. So select all, copy. And at this point I can turn off the red solid. I'm not gonna need it anymore. Go back to my optical flares, go to twirl, activate expressions on the center and paste my expression, right? So right now the positional expression that I used to have on my uh, solid is attached to this value. And tracking null is already selected and you can see that, uh, let me actually delete the red one. You can now see that our effect follows the flare precisely. So this is pretty cool because uh, parenting uh, 2D effects to 3D layers always has been a bit of a problem, especially when you actually make use of the Z space. And this light does, you can see that the uh, shadow itself doesn't only move left and right, but also up and down indicating that the flare is moving in the Z space. And right now you can track them and move them from the 2D effects to 3D. So this is pretty cool. All right, there is one more thing that's hidden in super glue. It's a bit of a bonus that I threw in together and hopefully you will find it useful. Let's open up one more composition to show it off and that's gonna be called 10. And I'm not going to give it a name, so it's a surprise. So uh, because we just typed super in the effects and presets panel, we got the two parts of the super glue that have that word in the name. But if I delete that and simply navigate to the 
Kuba HQ super glue, you will see there is actually four expressions in here. So on top of the super glue, you also have connect anchors and connect centers. And this is something that uh, could be pretty useful. Uh, I hope you will find a use for it. And it will basically allow you to draw a simple vector line between two connected points. So let's try it really quickly. I'm just going to create a new new solid. Let's make it 50-50. And just for the sake of the demonstration, I'm also going to move the anchor to the zero point, right? So it sticks there. And maybe apply a bit of wiggle on the scale because we're gonna be using connecting centers so let's do uh wiggle one comma what 50 that should do enough yeah this is pretty good uh rotation wiggle one 180 so that it freaks out quite a bit awesome and position uh wiggle what one 800 should be probably fine. Cool. All right, so we have red solid four, and we're just gonna rename it into red, make another copy, change the properties of this one, and let's say make it green. So now we have two of them, maybe rename it as well. Uh, let's make another copy change its properties, uh, make it yellow, and rename it into yellow. Huh, the name doesn't show here. Uh, duplicate. Yeah, you guessed it, it's gonna be blue. I work for Google. Mm. There we go. All right, so I mean, we have a composition with a uh, four uh, rectangles flying around, scaling, rotating. And now with none of the layers selected, I'm just gonna click QHQ connect anchors, and that's gonna create a brand new shape layer. And you can see that by default, the shape layer goes all the way from the top left corner to the bottom right. And that's because uh, we have no targets defined. So let's just hook up start anchor to blue and an anchor to yellow and there we go we have a connection and if i play back the video you can see that those two are now attached and i can very easily switch what is being connected by simply picking up well green to green doesn't make much sense by simply picking different layers on my effects palette so if i want to create a let's say a, a rectangle i would probably make several copy of it and have green connected to yellow and then whoops then let's make another copy and yellow connected to red and let's make one more copy whoops that shouldn't be red that should be blue and then blue and red and right now uh, it's not really a rectangle but more of a uh, and gone that's flying distorted and you know this is using very same expression it has all the try tricks and try and catch and, and uh, attaching to anchor and just like the other one i give you two versions so if i just delete this layers and uh, actually instead of deleting these layers let's just create more so uh click away to deselect everything and let's try the other one connect centers what we can do on connect centers is hook something else up. So let's see what's not connected. Let's let's connect green to blue through the centers. And I think I'm missing one connection here. Yeah, I, I mixed up this one, so I'm just gonna delete it. You know what? This is becoming messy. <laughs> okay, let's get back. Uh, yeah. So so just like you connect the anchors you can also connect centers I, th I think it makes sense and the cool thing is since those are vector lines you can use all the tools you would typically use 
when uh, working with uh, shape layers. So if I go to the stroke here and open it up a bit, I can, for example, introduce dashes to it. Let me hide all the presets and uh, you know, After Effects is gonna render the nice dashed line or you know, I can decide that you know, I don't really want dashes, I want circles and I want them to be more dense. And this is a very, very quick way of getting some cool linear animations done using this expression. So yeah, I, I guess this will do it for this third episode of Kuba HQ Tutorials Season 2. Uh, it's pretty cool, I think, you know, how a very simple, what is it, six or seven line expression gives you so much control and, and so many possibilities. I hope you guys will find a lot of uses for it in your compositions. And as always, you know, drop me a mail or write me a comment if you happen to use any of my tools in your work, because I'm really curious always to see what people come up with and, and how they manage to further uh, hack and tweak uh, the stuff I make to, you know, create cool new visuals, effects and, and compositions next week or, or not next week but on the next episode we'll probably be doing channel splitter which is a kind of weird way of doing color correction that uh, i'm recently uh, using a lot in my work uh, i haven't yet decided it could be either channel splitter or perhaps i may do the rainy window that a lot of people are asking for but rainy window is a, a bit of a heavy tutorial and i'm not sure how much time i'm going to have in the coming weeks so we'll see but uh, at the moment i i have still material for around 15 more tutorials so this is looking to be a really really cool season for kuba hq yeah so uh I think that's enough. Let, let me not ramble on. Let me bring on my Diablo guy and rotate him so that we have something cool happening on the screen while I say uh, thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to the channels on YouTube, on Vimeo, to go and comment. And, you know, if you feel like, drop a donation or, or just, you know, spread the word. The more people view this content, the, the happier I get. And so far, you know, season two had pretty good reception. Uh, I'll continue making new episodes and hope you guys will continue enjoying the content. Until then, for Kuba HQ Tutorials, I'm Kuba Michalski and I'll see you next time.